What's the crack, lads? Welcome back. It is Thursday. We have more players to review and analyze. We're going to be starting with the player of the week. The three highlight cards are Kessi, Izak, and Palacios. Palacios has got a unique player skill track back. Izak has got one touch pass. And Kessi, after his Barcelona heroics last week, has got super sub. So let's get straight into it. There's a couple of players in here that I think are very well worth it. Um, but again, look, lads, to preface all of this, uh, you know, pack reviews and stuff. There are players in this that when you are starting off, these are going to be monster players for you. You know what I mean? It's an instant spin and even the worst player on the pack here. Like if you were to get these three players, the three lowest rated or even Kubo instead of Palacios, you're going to have a very good right back, a very good goalkeeper and a very good center forward that you can kind of shape your team around. However, that becomes less of a priority when you are, you know, after having played the game for a while, because obviously as you develop your squad over, you know, a week, a month, and, you know, three months, you're going to be in a different stage of your squad building, so to speak. You'll have, probably have a lot of beastly players in the 90s, right? So, with that in mind, I do think that there are only probably about two or three players in here that are worth it. But we are going to go through them all, as usual, and go on a bit of a deep dive with them, starting with Mandanda. So, obviously, every week, these players are on A rating, so that is a one, you know, a big kind of... Um, like a plus for these players, right? Now, this guy isn't a bad goalkeeper. He's got standard form, but the A rating will be good enough to get him up to the uh, more, per, you know, he'll be more up than not when you are there. He'll be more consistent. And I do think that he is a fairly decent keeper as a defensive goalkeeper. Low punt, long throw, and captaincy, fairly decent. Um, Obviously, these stats, you know, for newcomers, you don't need to train these players. You can't train these players. It's literally just what you see is what you get here. 86 reflexes and 76 parrying in my opinion, is not worth it. You know, go and get yourself a top of the, cla top of the range class keeper like Donnarumma. Oblak, you know, Ederson is there on a free and train him up to get at least 90 reflexes. Um, that's just my opinion. We've also got Girtrida. This guy is a monster full back. He's a right back. He's got a lovely engine on him. 80 stamina, 83 speed, 84 acceleration. But I also like his defensive stats. He's extremely balanced. And as I've said, lads, before, right? You can kind of see where they're steering the gameplay with how they've act, how they've been bringing out players since V2.4. And now that we are on V2.4.2, with the next update being 2.5, you can see that where they're kind of going with the players, right? And a lot of it is upping the dribbling stats, keeping the defense and the attack solid and kind of fairly balanced if you are a kind of a, a dual player. So CMFs, DMFs, um, right backs, left backs, left midfielders, right midfielders. It's kind of like a dual role, right? This guy's not bad. There is a lot of players that are similar to him. Standard form, but on A rating, obviously. He can play center back or right back. I think as center back, he's probably not going to be good enough. Um, but I do like his player skills. He doesn't have blocker, but he has everything else, including one touch pass. So he kind of falls into the mold of your fairly run in the mill, um, kind of, you know, mid game right back. Uh, I don't think that he's going to be anywhere where you need him to be if you are going to be competing for, you know, anywhere past Division 4. Um, now, obviously, you could carry him a little bit, but there are better options out there, even just plain cards, you know, the likes of uh, Reese James or Trent on the standard cards for GP are probably an upgrade on him. Even though he does have nice player skills, I do like him and I do like his player skills, especially the sliding tackle, fighting spirit and one touch pass is going to get you out of a lot of difficulties. But he can't play right mid, so you can't kind of roam up with him, even though he does have early crosser. Um, you're not going to be getting the ball up to him that often if you are playing a right mid or a right winger. So it's just something to keep in mind. If you do spin him, you don't need to train him. You can just try him on the A form. Now, we've also got Palacios. This guy is a unique card because he's got the track back interception um, as a center midfielder. So that's going to help out, especially if you are man marking or you manually got the ball back or try to get the ball back with him. He has got inconsistent form which means that his player arrows in-game might be up and down and all over the place, but he does have the A rate, and so that should stabilize it this week at least. Um, you know, occasional foot usage, but high foot accuracy, so he kind of opens up a few little options for you. But again, lads, he's just your stereotypical kind of, you know, normal center midfielder. I would not be spinning for him. Um, obviously, you know, you can make it room in your squad for him if you are a Leverkusen fan or you are looking for this box-to-box -box guy specifically with the high stamina, but there's so many better options out there than him. Um, similar with this guy as a left winger, there's so many players that are left wing players and like the game has just thrown so many at us, but this guy is interesting, man. He's having a great season for Lazio. 
90 dribbling, 87 acceleration, 85 balance. That's all you really need for a cut-in winger, right? I did a video on side midfielders versus wingers. I definitely think you should check it out because I think right midfielders and left midfielders are the key now. Now, this guy can play attack and midfield. So he does have fairly decent stats. Obviously, the passing is going to be boosted by true passing, but he doesn't have low lofted pass. He doesn't have one touch pass. So I definitely think he is a unique card, but is he going to be somebody that you get in your squad? Maybe. I mean, maybe you could have him with the track back and fighting spirit. You could have him in your squad with the unwavering form, but there are equally as good wingers out there for standard if you want to save your coins. Kubo, they did release another version of Kubo before, and they've kind of continued on with this center forward version of him. Very decent, obviously first time shot and one touch pass means that you can just peel away from defenders, double touch, soul control, first time shot, long range, curler, um, he also has true passing so you can play him through the middle and as an SS, but you can also play him on the right mid, so he is kind of a unique player, I think Kubo is best used when you have a sub tactic that you start him center forward or you start him right mid, and then you can kind of sub tactic and change in the second half or whenever you want, you can change when you're attacking and then go back when you're defending or whatever, and you can have him as that center forward. A very decent card, 88 dribbling, 91 acceleration, 90 balance. The only thing letting him down is finishing. I mean, if he has 80, like five finishing here, he's basically Romario 2.0. So that is something to think about. He's just lacking that little bit of finishing. But if you are a very good finisher, you can make serious inroads with this guy as him being one of your main strikers, especially if you don't have a legend like Romario or somebody like that. We've also got Kostic. I won't spend too much time on him because there's been so many cards of him. It seems every week there's a different card of him having a great season as well. Lovely player skills, standard form on this card, but the A rating is going to bring him up. Um, obviously, I think there's been other cards that have had unwavering form. Ball control dribbling is a little bit low, but it's all about crossing with him. Early crosser, pinpoint crossing. So if you don't cross a lot of ball into the box, this guy is not going to be for you. Um, he is definitely suited as a left mid. He's a left footed player. He's almost he's also got um bad weak accuracy as well. He never really uses his right foot. So that is something you have to play him very traditional. Like left winger crossing in outwards towards the ball, out swingers, you know, left foot crossing across the box. So um I've focused on him quite a lot, but he is a cross specialist. Now it kind of gets interesting here because we've got Carrasco Carrasco, who is a left back in here. He can play anywhere up the left flank, unwavering form. I always like this guy, man. Now, his defensive awareness lets him down a little bit, but I think he's one of the packs of the, the game here, the players of the of the pack. He's got 89 acceleration. He's got 76 defensive awareness, 93 dribbling, excellent ball control. He's also got excellent passing, and he is able to play up anywhere up the, up the flank, right? One touch pass is going to boost up his passing a little bit. We've also got rising shot, knuckle shot, lovely dribble skills, and pinpoint crossing with that amazing run, speeding bullet, incisive run, and long ranger uh, play style when he's the AI. So he is a very interesting one for me. I definitely recommend him, and I know that he's going to be meta, man. I know he's going to be meta if you play that certain way. You'll have to mix crosses with cutting in and shooting because he has that 81 finishing. This guy is a required skill set, and with the way the game plays at the moment, the gameplay might be a little bit too chaotic to really see the benefits of him. It might be with the next patch that we see this guy become an absolute beast. Now, we've also got Douglas Luiz from Aston Villa having a great season as well. Standard form, interception, fighting spirit, man marking with one touch pass. That's what we want to see, true passing. He doesn't have low lofted pass, which is very overpowered at the moment, but the rest of his stats are very standard. You know what you're getting here, lads. I've done a lot of videos on DMFs, so I'm not going to go into massive detail on him. You know what you're getting here with a DMF that's going to be genuinely just being able to kind of sit in the hole and like go box to box. I would definitely play him with an anchorman. Um, and I don't know if he's as good as other box to box guys that are there. I all, also had Anguisa, we have Labotko, all those guys from the Napoli pack to check out. Declan Rice, obviously, there is a lot of good box-to-box -box there. I still think Goretzka or Barella are probably the two best in the game. Um, so I would probably hold off. I wouldn't spin for Luis, but if you do get him, he is pretty decent. Uh, we've got Isaac, who scored last week as well. First time shot, one touch pass. He's got standard form on A rating as usual. And then, of course, on top of that, we've got our traditional stats. Ball control, dribbling, tight possession, but he's also got 83 finishing. He's a good height, so you don't need too much uh, stats into his heading. He does have only 71 jumping and heading, but the way the game is, you will get on, other, on the end of crosses and stuff, being able to knock balls on. He's a good option to have. Acceleration and offensive awareness let this card down, and also the stamina and balance let this card down. So make it that what you wish, 
but he does have some very, very nice player skills and also as a bit of a unique card, he is probably worth a punt. And last but not least, we've got Kessie and this man Saka. We'll get to Kessie in a second. Saka, obviously down as a right winger on this card. He's had a lot of different versions of cards on wavering form, having an incredible season with Arsenal. And it pains me to say that as a United man, but he is a beastly player. One touch pass, low lofted pass, track back on this card as well. First time shot, long range, and then you've got a couple of player skills that suit dribblers as well. He's also got blistering acceleration at 92, balance at 84, offensive awareness 83, ball control, dribbling and tight possession with speed all around the 80 mark. 80, you know, dribbling is 87 obviously, and then speed is 84. I actually love Saka. I don't play with him enough, but I must actually start playing with him. We will be doing a bit of a spin later on the live stream, so hope you guys check it out. And then last but not least, we have Kessie. So Kessie's a very interesting one, right? And I do think that he is the player in form at the moment. He is the player to look at. This card goes from good to exceptional when you take into consideration that it's a super sub card, right? So I genuinely would not be starting the game with Kessie because I wanted to activate that super sub ability when he comes on in the second half, right? You've got long range shooting, first time shot, but then you've also got man marking, track back, interception, sliding tackle and fighting spirit defensively and being able to be an absolute unit in the middle of the pitch, right? As I mentioned earlier with the offensive and defensive kind of balancing act, we've got it very close there as well. His defensive just gets a two extra points. His aggression is 93, his physical contact is 92 with 89 stamina, and then you've also got the passing and dribbling stats that you really need a centre midfielder to have to bring the ball forward and to win the ball and, you know, be able to get rid of it first time. I think this card would have been godly if he had one touch pass, but he's not that type of player. So I do think, bring him on in, your, in the second half, start your main, start an 11, and if you get Kessie, he will be dominant, man, trust me. He will be an absolute monster Little couple of few bits and pieces that are kind of a downgrade on this card. Um, but I do think that, you know, one touch pass as a centre midfielder is nearly a given if you're not playing a good passer in DMF or you're not playing a little double pivot in midfield that can control the ball. If you are playing an AMF, you don't need to worry about that. But a lot of people aren't at the moment. They're playing a flat four or they're playing, a uh, you know, a three-man midfield with two wingers or two side midfielders. So that is something to think about. But that is it for me, Les. I think that's everybody that we covered I will be back quite soon. I did cover this guy. Yes, I did. I'll be back quite soon. We will be streaming later and I will talk to you then. Peace.